we're back. We are back. <laughs> we are back again because it has been highly requested to get Hattie back on the channel. You have a lot of people wanting to see more of you on the YouTube. That might be a little nudge to get a channel. It's not the same doing it on my own. I love doing it with you. Same. I honestly people. hate like, doing YouTubes alone. You don't. You can't bounce off anyone. So yeah. we'll just have to keep keep. We on play coming. good ping pong. We really do. And Hattie's like, what else can we do? I'm like, listen, they want the upper butt. <laughs> She's like, anything but the butt. But guys, but, but. we are back with the upper butt video. That has been highly requested. Hattie, talk us through the upper butt. So the upper butt is essentially, as a lot of girls refer to, the top shelf. And it's that beautiful part of the glute that separates the lower back to the glute. And so it gives us that nice pop, especially when we're twisting and posing or you see Rachel do it all the time she's in this position and it really just accentuates that top glute so the top shelf or the glute med is a stabilizer of the hip so it works with your core your lateral core and your glute your glutes to stabilize the hip so it's really important for lifting not only does it look good but it's really functional and it's also responsible for a hip abduction so when we've in the past when we've used the cues spread the floor or knees out that's your glute meat that's the top shelf so today we're going to be doing we're actually going to do a workout for you we've put our favorite top glute exercise together as a workout we've got multiple rep ranges because we know that hypertrophy or building muscle happens at all rep ranges as long as it's close to proximal failure there are some different rules when we apply it to our compound movements versus our isolated movements when we're doing the compound lifts like our sumo deadlift what we're going to do today my favorite her favorite <laughs> not really <laughs> we are going to be working to what's called technical failure so as, as soon as technique starts to fail that's where we stop because we don't want to get injured and then things like our back extensions even single leg hip extensions and things like hip thrusts we can really work to true muscular failure which means that we cannot lift another rep with without maybe using momentum or other muscle groups taking over because they're really safe exercises to fail on. And we actually wanna have a variation of both of them in the program. So I'm really excited for today's workout. It's gonna be a really awesome, awesome and one. A question I get asked a lot by my girls is how do they know what proximal fa failure is? It's a really good question because I think what mental failure and physical failure are two different things. And often we don't realize how strong we are or how hard we can push till we actually go into the zone. And we're all full of like type one type two muscle fibers some people have more than others and I'm definitely that speed high heavy loads lower reps and and Rachel's actually a volume responder so she loves those high reps that's why it's great to have a variety of those different rep ranges coming in some people mentally feel like they can push higher reps a lot easier and that means you're more a bit bit more of a volume responder and then some people find the lower reps and the heavier weights easier to deal with so it's just what we train ourselves to do and like you said proximal failure is essentially working towards you know I'm gonna say two reps shy of complete failure and that's complete muscular failure not like a mental this is hard yeah this is really hurting you know it's it's funny failing in training is actually the aim of the game mm. we always get upset when we don't hit those rep ranges but if you've chosen a weight that you've got say you're meant to be doing 15 reps but you get to 12 and you absolutely cannot do another rep it's just not happening that's success yeah, that's success mm. the next time that you go to do that same uh, exercise you might use that same weight and then push to 15 reps yep. before you go and increase the load the following week and that's still progressive overload because we want to be essentially getting the, the body to handle a little bit more <laughs> each time so that we get the adaptations that we need for either strength or hypertrophy. And I think people get confused because they think that like, let's say they're doing a hip thrust, that their weight for hip thrust at eight reps and 15 reps should be the same, but it shouldn't because obviously there's a big like change there in your rep range. So make sure that, you know, if you're doing a higher rep, you're not gonna be able to lift as much weight, vice versa. Anyway, we could talk all day about this, but let's get into it. Let's go. We're gonna start with a little warm up, and we're gonna do some glute activation work. So Rachel is the perfect model. <laughs> so get on the floor, <laughs> <laughs> Get down. Okay, so we're gonna start with side line plans. So there's, there's many variations. I would say it's more than one way to skinny cat. There's so many variations of exercises out there. So this is the one we're gonna choose. Do you come up or do you go down? No, you're gonna be down. Like, you're gonna be chilling like a villain. Legs straight. Love that for me. Okay, so what I want Rachel to do is actually she's gonna turn her pelvis slightly towards the floor. So she actually needs the top arm to support her upper body. You know you're in the wrong position if you don't need your arm there. So you actually, so the pelvis goes towards the floor. This top leg is going to bend slightly, bend slightly. It's going to sit on the little groove towards her ankle. Okay, so bottom leg straight, top leg slightly bent. And she's going to focus, right there, yeah. 
on externally rotating the knee up to the ceiling. Yep. Good. Really squeezing at the top. Good. So as she comes up, it's really important that you don't move that position on your body. Yep, go again. Now this is just glute activation. It's not that it burn our glutes out. We're not going to be getting any hypertrophy effects here. It is just to literally get the glute nice and warm. And other side. One thing that you might want to do, or you might notice that you do, is as the knee's coming up, the body will want to go out of position, but you really want to make sure you've got all the weight on this arm. It's really going to support the placing of the upper body so that it's isolating the abduction work here. Something about the glutes, and we've said this last time, is that the glutes and the, and the core, they work simultaneously, so they work together. So it's really important that while you're doing all this glute work, you're also doing um, some abduction and hip, um, essentially, Lower, lower ab work that's going to help pull the pelvis into position and it's going to allow the, the pelvis and the rib cage to work together. So that when you come into hip, ex hip extension, the glutes and the abs are on together. Bird dogs are great, we've done that in the last one. We're actually going to go into a single leg hip extension. So, yeah, the glute med is also, it's, it's, it helps stabilize the hip with the lateral core. So, anytime you're on one leg, and we're going to be doing some single leg uh, deadlifts today. You're going to be working the glute. Same, same thing with this position. We want the knee to be in line with the toe. So just one set of each. Again, it's not going to. It's not meant to completely exhaust your glutes. You're probably going to feel some activation, maybe a little bit of a burn but we're going to be using all the compound lifts to do all the dirty work <laughs> for today. See this top position here, come up again. Her abs and her glutes are on together. Guys, what we're going to start with is our compound lift and there's a sumo deadlift. So sumo deadlift just means feet wider than hands. I also like a semi-sumo position. So depending on your, your the angle of your hips, you might find that we can see some really wide sumos and we can see some, like I said, a semi-sumo position. So finding the right position for you is like, how, how does it feel? You don't get any kind of discomfort in the hips. And then we just really want to make sure that your knees are always tracking in line with the toes. So if you've got a really wide stance, come into a really wide stance. So if that's your position, so if you look at the, the knee and the toe angle, if that's your position, that's not a great position for you. You're better off bringing your feet in closer. Yep. And again, so now the glute knee here, this top part here, the top shelf, drive the knee down. Drive the knee down. There we go. You can actually sit, you can see it so well. So well. Bam, girl! So hard not to stack. So we can actually see that the glute meat here is driving the knees out. And the cue that I like to use with semi sumo and semi sumo deadlifts is not just knees out, knees back, knees back behind me to open my hips up. Rachel likes to move the bar to her. I like to walk up to the bar. Whatever you prefer, the most important thing is that your shins are touching the bar. Okay, your shins are touching the bar. Feet turned out slightly. Yep, even a little bit, I'd go even a little bit more than that. Yep, so shins to touch the bar, do you want to bring the bar in? Okay, now hands go straight down. I actually have like a pinky knee and knurling. That's a really nice position here. It's really important that you grip the bar tight because there's a chain reaction that goes all the way up into the shoulders, into the lats, and the lats are a stabilizer of the core and they, wrap, they attach to the thoracolumbar fascia, which is down in the sacrum, and it's gonna be a supporter of the glutes as well. So, hands on the bar, chin, yep, so, yeah, bottom a little bit higher. That position there, drive the knees out. Now, <laughs> lats of pelvis, yep, beautiful. Deep breath in, push the world away. Drive the knees through. Chin to bar. That literally kills sitting in the bottom of that. <laughs> okay, so, drive the knees out, 
tips up a little higher. There. Knees out. Good. Knees out.
exercise is going to be a single leg deadlift and I'm a big fan of the massive man. Massive, uh, uh, multiple single leg deadlift variations but the one we've chosen today is going to be single leg deadlift with the, the same hand working as the same leg. So this is really going to challenge the glute meat and it's going to challenge, uh, essentially minimize that lateral shift that can happen with single leg deadlifts. So it's also, again, anytime that we're on one leg, it's also challenging the lateral core plus the glute med. And you'll find there might be a little bit of deductor in there, but it's mostly going to be the glute med. So we're going to do a single leg RDL. Same, same oh, hand. Single leg RDL. Single leg RDL. So last time we did a bed knee. Yeah. Okay. And how many? 15. 12 to 15. So I'm giving Rachel multiple rep, like a rep range bracket. Essentially, she wants to aim for the 15 reps. So especially. I actually find it harder with one dumbbell than two for the balance. Yeah, so something that's really important that Rachel just mentioned, she finds it a lot harder with one dumbbell over two because she's not going to be counterbalancing that leg. So, how's that? Perfect. Really nice. Good. Coming up, you can also use this leg this back foot to come all the way back. So let it come all the way back, 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 back. Good. And come on. Now, yeah. if you can't... Yeah, there go, go, go. <laughs> if you can't balance that... Yeah, you can use... So, uh, I mean, the thing is, if you can't balance, it's like yes and no. So if you need something to, to balance on, just use one little pinky to, to help balance you. But again, you actually really want to be, but the point of single leg, a single leg deadlift, is to really challenge the stability of and the exercise. Can I say, probably about, I think it was a year to 18 months ago, Hattie came up and helped me with lots of mobility and sort of like pre-exercise stuff, because she sort of analyzed me and was like, this is where I think you need to improve. And I'm telling you now, I could not do a single leg body weight exercise. I could do one rep. I did lots of ankle work, so lots of jumping. She gave yeah. me some stuff to do before. Single I, yeah, single leg calf raises. And this, I practiced so much. Just one finger and then I moved to body weight and then I moved to hold. And I was doing that for every session, every lower body session yeah. for about six months. And now I find I absolutely love single leg deadlifts. I do so many variations, torsionator, dumbbell, barbell. dumbbell, barbell. But it's just good for you guys to know that about 12 to 18 months ago, I couldn't even do really a single one without my hips turning. And remember I had yeah. all that stuff going on. So it's really interesting. I'm so glad yeah. you brought that up because people underestimate how much the ankle affects what goes on at the hip. So often when we see um, most people challenged in a single leg deadlift, not always from the, the hip, but what's happening at the ankle. And so if we've got a lot of ankle instability. What you might find is when you are doing a single leg deadlift or you're standing on one leg, that the calf feels like it's working a lot. And it is because it's trying to stabilize ankle which means that you're going to get less work happening at the hip so don't neglect your ankles ladies especially if you're someone that cannot get the knee over the toe doing a split squat and the knee is just kind of wobbling everywhere we can say well is it the ankle that's the problem or is the hip or is it both because there's generally a relationship between the ankle knee and the hip and also like i said the lateral core and maybe um, we can quickly film three of our top ankle yep um, Don't let this back foot 
come onto the floor at all. I tend to bring my, my leg up because I know that I'm also going to challenge my anterior core as well in that position.
the glutes, we've got a little finisher. This is actually your domain over my domain the finishes. Yeah, we're gonna do, why don't we do fire hydrogen and I don't know. Finish or the finisher? But you can give me cues when I finish her. <laughs> because I think some of the main things people do wrong with fire Let's go. watching this vlog thank you Hattie as always I love having you and I love sharing your brain with the world uh, they want to see more we can't get enough we can't sit below what do you want we can get <laughs> yeah let us know what you want to see next give um us, give us a full one room exactly but thank you guys for tuning in we love you I'm gonna leave Hattie's links as well so you can check her out on Instagram and that's all thanks guys thanks